Today's show brought to you in part by GoToMeeting. For a free 30-day trial, use code podcast at gotomeeting.com. Do your arms feel as long as a gorilla's when you walk your dog? We'll find out how to avoid that next on Tales from the Road. Hey everyone, welcome to Tales from the Road with Dr. Jill Windy. I'm Courtney Wallen and this is the Thanks. one and only Gunner the Wonder Dog. That's right. He has not been around for a while. It's so no, good to have him back. Few weeks, yeah. So he's going to be demonstrating some of our topics today, but today is leash training, not leash training, but uh, leashes, collars, and gorilla arms. Gorilla arms, yes. Gorilla arms, I'm, I'm yes. interested. If you have ever, we should have called it gorilla arms or kite flying. <laughs> if you have ever um, walked a dog bigger than 40 pounds who is not well leash trained, um, then your arms sort of feel like gorilla arms by the time you're done. They're hanging down, your knuckles are down <laughs> around your ankles. It's, it's horrible. It's not a good feeling. And Gunnar no. would never do something like that, right? No, he doesn't pull. He is, um, he is my kite flyer. So <laughs> he, is, he is the one who is like flying a kite when he is on a regular leash. So we're going to talk about um, ways that we can, uh, we, ways we can have a little less unruly kid on the leash. There you go. So the reason why we're talking about this is while you're out on the road, you want your pet to have as much fun as you are having. So if okay. you're planning to do certain things, you want to make sure your pet can do them as well or participate. Mm -hmm. um, right. So we want the proper restraint, especially for campgrounds and things like that, to right. keep them safe them safe and others safe as well because Correct. sometimes you don't know how the dog will react exactly and they often react very differently at home than they do um, on the road or in a campground versus just in the rv it takes you know that it, it, there's different scenarios so we need to be prepared for them all great so uh first things first yes leash training yes yeah so not all dogs are naturally know how to walk on a leash is what you're telling no, me actually <laughs> not huh, no, weird. they are actually it's not an instinctual behavior for them to be attached to something so we have to train them to a leash just like anything else and we also have to train them like how to walk in a straight line on a leash because Gunnar is great on a leash as long as he can go like that <laughs> you know but um but we do need to get them trained to a leash and we start that in early puppyhood um, if you have an older pet and haven't leash trained them yet it's not too late to start um, but that is something you'll have to actually train them to Gotcha. Interesting, because you would just yeah. assume that most dogs would be okay with that. But there's right. some things that play into that, and that's, I had to ask you, eliminating. Right, yeah. Eliminating. <laughs> the, I see this on the uh -huh. script here. What, tell me yeah. more. <laughs> Why okay. won't they eliminate? Well, first of all, so that everyone's on the same page, eliminating means peeing and pooping. So, <laughs> oddly enough, some dogs don't like an audience when they're doing mm. that. And so, we'll have some, and this will happen to us at the clinic sometimes as well, we'll be walking a patient. Um, out in the walking area and they're like what are you doing and why are you watching me go away you know they just when they're on the leash they won't go so you do want to make sure that, that they do get used to that because very few places are going to have somewhere for you to just you know open roam with your pet uh, not on a leash and so they do need to be uh, trained to do that as well very interesting so uh, if they won't walk on the leash right whether it be eliminating or other reasons mm -hmm. uh, how do we start to train yeah, them right. yeah. to walk on uh, a leash. Yeah, basically we're going to start this um, by using some treat training and that type of thing. Um, we find a particular treat that they really like. And this is going to be a high repetition type of training. So literally the treats need to be like that big. So, uh, so that you're not like, first of all, forgetting why they got the treat, but <laughs> also, you know, so that they'll still eat their food. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to get their bellies totally full on that. But basically what we're going to do is basically just going to go through a lot of calm exercises with them on the leash, uh, just getting them used to having it on them, using your treats and saying, oh, isn't this fantastic? This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, so that way, uh, you know, they're like, gosh, I hope mom puts my leash on me. Today. <laughs> you know? uh, so lots of praise. Very, very positive. We don't want to do a lot of pulling and dragging. So um, practicing doing that calm and kind of reeling them in and then working up to standing up and having them follow you and just getting used to actually being with you with this thing on them. Yeah, you know, I used to live with a Jack Russell mm -hmm. and he was like on a pogo stick. Whenever you would right. say <laughs> leash or walk, it was just ding, all fours yeah. up and up and up. They get excited, yeah. but some dogs so aren't too. like that. So yeah. uh, if the regular leash isn't working, mm -hmm. what are our options? Because that could sure. be. Yeah, and else. a lot of dogs on a regular leash either either won't 
come and walk with you and you have to do the drag thing or uh, which we don't want to do no <laughs> or they um, are just so unruly on the leash and there are a lot of a lot of pulling and and zigzagging and that kind of thing so a couple of things that we know is a lot of the the choke style collars and the prong type collars for the vast majority of dogs don't work well um, and you may have your own personal experience with this you know routinely through the clinic I'll see a dog come in on a on a choke collar and they'll be like stop pulling you're choking yourself stop pulling you know so it's not really an effective deterrent to pulling um, and we also know that anything that causes distress or pain can also increase the likelihood for aggression gotcha. and so we don't want to do that mm -mm. Um, and if they pull hard enough um, they can actually cause damage uh, to the trachea oh. so so for the vast like I said for the vast majority of dogs we don't use that style of collar um, what we do really prefer to use and what's most effective for the vast majority of dogs <laughs> is to uh, use things that have positive reinforcement that are painless and uh, that use pressure points and, and contact points that dogs understand that they use on each other. Gotcha. So um, the first one that I'm going to show you is Gunner's Gentle Leader. Ooh, and is he excited? He's <laughs> like, oh, bring it on. Um, this is, uh, like I said, it's called a gentle leader, uh, and it's one of my favorites. It actually looks very similar to a horse halter. I'm going to stick it over there yeah, so you can see it against the background. But um, it has a strap that goes around the back of the head, and then one that goes over the nose, and then your leash attaches down here. Now, the way that this works... Come here, Gunner. Say, is he okay with that? <laughs> yeah, he's cool. He's taking a nap up here. So the way this works is it slides over your head and around behind clips on just like that such a good dog so when the leash is attached here now you have control of his head and if you have control of his head then mm -hmm. he can't pull you because when he goes to pull and you keep this his head's gonna go Ooh. like that so he's not <laughs> gonna be able to pull you down the road no <laughs> um, now this is not a muzzle okay he can open his mouth <laughs> he can eat drink pant bite bark anything um, but um, uh, so it won't deter him from mm -hmm. biting. So if you've got a dog who gets aggressive in certain situations, this will not stop them from biting. <laughs> um, and it's very comfortable. The only thing I would suggest, Gunner doesn't tend to mind the color contrast here too much, but for some dogs, I would recommend getting the collar color to be as close to their facial hair color as possible. Okay. Because some of them are like, what is on my head? Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they have like the cross eyes right, yeah. <laughs> syndrome. Yeah. Um, but again, very, very effective. The way that this works is it puts a pressure point on the back behind the ears, and then it also closes down here around the muzzle. And this is actually a technique that dogs use on each other, is to come around like this um, to help kind of calm each other and get in charge of each other. So, yeah. um, it's like, just let me sleep. Yeah, he's like, I just want to model it <laughs> on the floor. So there's a gentle leader. Very, very nice. So how early can we start a dog on a gentle leader? Eight weeks. All right. Yeah. And, and it, can they wear it for a long time? Because sometimes when we're camping, we take long hikes. If the dog can sure. do it, can can the gentle leader? Is it good oh, to keep right. it on yeah, that, that long? Absolutely. Yeah, they can have them on. It's not a 24-7. Yeah. Tool. No, that's not this one. <laughs> um, it's not a 24-7 tool, but you can have it on 16, 18 hours a day if you needed to. Fantastic. Now, what, well, now what's he doing now? All what's right. this? This <laughs> is called an easy walk harness. So if you've got a dog, okay. say maybe a pug or a Boston or something mm -hmm. that does not have a face, Yes. Um, <laughs> then a nose strap doesn't work well. Um, so for not all dogs, you know, a dental leader is going to be the answer. So the other uh, one that I really, really like is called the Easy Walk Harness, made by the same people as Gentle Leader. And what this does, you may notice a little difference, is it sits lower down on the shoulder here, but it also, the leash attaches, come up here, Gunny, the leash attaches right here. And so you can see when he, you pull on the leash, it now tightens down and puts a pressure point on his chest and again also redirects him to the side very and good so he can't pull on you if you put a regular harness on a dog you will turn them into a sled dog okay so, <laughs> but this one they can't pull you um my uh my own parents have two labradoodles and they are crazy pullers They're yes. just happy high on life dudes and uh, walk very, very easily with these as well. So big dogs, little dogs, uh, both will fit well. I know a Labradoodle that you know and has the same name as you that is crazy. Okay. Jill, Jill Kennedy. Uh-huh. 
little labradoodle little, yes. she i <laughs> we have mutual friends that have this dog that i don't know how they do it so maybe they should get an easy walk for go. jill we'll get an easy walk for her <laughs> So all this okay. to say that, you know, we're going mm -hmm. on these great trips and so we want our dogs to participate, right. but getting them leash trained, A, is, is the important. first thing to do, right. and then B, getting the correct leash for yes. them. Yes, absolutely. And a couple of things we want to remember as well is not just for their safety and, and your convenience, but also in order to keep campgrounds pet friendly, we have to abide by the rules and not have a bunch of altercations and problems there. So because um, Camp Browns are pet friendly a as a service and a privilege to its patrons. And so we want to protect our ability to be able to travel with our pets easily as well. Absolutely. Well said. All right. Well, this has been another great episode and we hope that you have maybe learned uh, about some new products that you could, <laughs> you know, that will save your life. One of those like, <laughs> why did I know that before? Right. Uh, so Where's check, exactly. Check those out. We'll have them in the show notes for today's show. But just a reminder that Tales from the Road has its own board on RVNN's Pinterest account so be sure to check that out of course rvnn is on facebook twitter and google plus uh next week we've got a great episode what are we going to be talking about uh we're going to be talking about uh, making sure you've gotten everything packed in and in order before you hit the road uh, one more person or pet to, <laughs> to right. think about right. and we don't want to forget anything so join us next week right here in rvnn for tales from the road Want to go for a walk, Gabe? 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 But are you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home.